Hi, I'm Josh Ratner and welcome to Health Alliance and You, a health and wellness series brought to you by Health Alliance of the Hudson Valley. Colorectal cancer, also called colon cancer, takes some 50,000 lives in this country every year. It's the third most commonly diagnosed cancer in both men and women and the third leading cause of cancer death. Did you know it's also one of the most preventable? Here to discuss this are board certified gastroenterologists, Drs. Michael Steckman, Kevin Dodd, and Daniel Blackman. They're all affiliated with Health Alliance Hospitals in Kingston. Dr. Dodd is also the medical director for gastroenterology at Margaretville Hospital, which is also part of the Health Alliance system. A gastroenterologist is uh, trained specifically in uh, diseases of the intestinal tract and the liver. Um, a gastroenterologist after uh, college and medical school will spend three years in a, uh, a general internal medicine uh, training program and then specialize in gastroenterology, which generally is another three years or so in specialized training. I feel like our role as gastroenterologists is to help people in, in many different ways with regard uh, to gastrointestinal issues. This is issues with their GI tract. We're also hepatologists, so we deal with disorders of the liver. Um, I would say a big part of what we're really trying to uh, promote is colon cancer screening, which uh, I feel is really one of the most important things we do. Uh, we're learning a lot about colon uh, cancer and ways to detect it and treat it. Um, and one of the big, um, very significant advances recently has been in colonoscopy, which is a common procedure that we do where we uh, insert a tube into the rectum and, and look through the large bowel for polyps. The way I describe it to my patients are uh, there are little lumps in the colon called polyps. These are uh, lumps that start as benign, uh, lesions, little lumps, that grow over years and can become cancerous. And the beauty of um, polyps is that uh, they are um, kind of a, a opportunity um, to uh, remove a benign lesion that with time can become cancerous. So it's kind of a, uh, an opportune way to screen people and remove these lesions. Uh, the procedure allows us to, to look for them and to remove them all in one fell swoop. Doing a screening procedure on a well person uh, and finding a polyp and removing it may save that person a, a cancer down the line. We generally recommend screening uh, on uh, asymptomatic individuals start at age 50 and if nothing is found every 10 years is the uh, the current uh, guidelines and recommendations. It is inherited, it's not a, a, a direct inheritance, it, there, there certainly are, are trends in families but uh, um, I, w I would say if, uh, if you have one parent with a colon cancer at any age, you are two to three times the risk of the general population. If your parent is um, between 50 and 60, that is on the younger side, then your incident goes up to maybe 10, 15 times the general population. Just in general, um, with colonoscopy being more and more common and more and more patients uh, um, compliant with it, uh, the incidence of colon cancers and advanced colon cancers is dropping in this country. It's dropped in this county. So while our goal is to screen people and prevent them from getting cancer in the first place, what we often do is also find cancer in its earliest stages by doing these things. These are um, people who might have a little bit of rectal bleeding and or, and or abdominal pain and various other complaints, um, change in bowel habits would be another one. They come in and we're able to catch the cancer in its earlier stages where it would be more easily treatable. 70 to 80 percent of colon cancer uh, can be averted or avoided with this procedure. The biggest problem right now, unfortunately, is getting people to do the procedure. We now have um, insurances, including Medicare, willing to pay for this, um, whereas before there was a lot of kickback um, so the government has incentivized people to, to get this done because we now know that um, we can save 70-80% of our population from getting colon cancer. Screening colonoscopies are, in general, not as terrible as people think. The preps have gotten better. Uh, they are a smaller volume, so you know, days of old people would drink a gallon of fluid and really not like us very much the next morning. Uh, we've now gotten preps down to almost 32 ounces and some even less uh, with better efficacy by the way that people take them and, and how they administer the prep. So uh, we've um, 
uh, very uh, strongly advocated for these newer preps and, uh, and the, the split dosing, which means taking half the night before and half the morning of, which actually leads to a better prep overall. You know, colon cancer is no different than any other cancer in that regard. The, the sooner we pick it up, the better off the patient is. So um, if we find cancer within a polyp, often we can treat that endoscopically by shaving the polyp off. Once that cancer, those cells have invaded the wall of the colon, uh, their um, survival drops, period. It really um, is crucial that patients get this done, get these polyps taken out. Polyps are extremely common. We find polyps in upwards of 25% of men, age 50 and up, and in 20% of women. So although there is a preponderance slightly towards men, it's pretty darn equal. So, you know, we sometimes get the uh, wife comes in and says, well, I don't need it because, you know, it's, you know, I'm female. It's wrong. No. We hope this segment helped you understand more about colon cancer and other GI issues. Remember, regular colon screenings starting at age 50 can lead to early detection. There are several kinds of screening tests. Talk with your doctor about which one is right for you. For more health information or to view this episode again, visit hahv.org. I'm Josh Ratner. Join us again next time for another segment of Health Alliance and You.